integrator is a small manual or electrical desktop machine with key set print characters one at a time on a piece of paper which is sped through a thrower. The typewriter revolutionized how we create written text, changed women's role in society, and even affected how we think of words. This amazing machine will eventually be replaced by a successor, the personal computer and home printer. But for this presentation, let's look at the typewriter, specifically the development of its keyboard. The keyboard is a significant part of the typewriter, but did you know that until the 1830s, typewriters did not even have a keyboard? The typewriter and its keyboard has had many iterations and many inventors. But the one who is most often credited for the invention of the modern day typewriter and a popular QWERTY keyboard is American mechanical engineer Christopher Scholes. In 1866, after five years of experiment, Scholes and his associates produced the Scholes and Glidden typewriter, which is similar to the typewriter we know of today. The QWERTY keyboard that is found on that typewriter is so named for the first six letters on its top row, reading from left to right. You can still find that on the keyboard that is used in most English-speaking countries today. Have you ever wondered why the characters on the QWERTY keyboard is laid out the way that they are? Why not arrange them in alphabetical order? In fact, a keyboard in alphabetical sequence has been created. But studies show no difference in speed at which typists type on an alphabetical keyboard versus the QWERTY keyboard. In fact, some trials show that even for typists trained using the alphabetical sequence keyboard, QWERTY typists remain faster. The seemingly random arrangements of keys on a QWERTY keyboard came about because of how the typewriter functions. When a key is pressed, a connected arm with the character at the end would lift and strike an ink ribbon, then together, press on the paper rolled in a typewriter to produce that character. When the key is released, the arm fell back to its original position. Scholes found that when characters that were commonly used were placed close together, the falling of the first arm and the rising of the subsequent arm would hit each other and tangle, causing the typewriter to jam. The typist would then have to stop and pry the arms apart, which is both inconvenient and messy. To solve this problem, Scholes and a business associate, James Densmore, designed a QWERTY keyboard which split up the 22 most common letter pairings to slow down the typist and prevent the commonly used keys from jamming. Scholes' original QWERTY keyboard only produced capital letters. It wasn't until much later that typewriter manufacturer Remington & Sons designed the use of the shift key, allowing each key to change from small letter to capital letter. They launched this new design in the Remington Model 2 typewriter, making it much more portable and therefore much more popular than its competitor, whose machine had twice the number of keys accommodated for both capital and small letters. The QWERTY keyboard, made and optimized for the English language, was standardized by 1910. However, it became apparent shortly after that the QWERTY layout was not necessarily efficient for other languages. It wasn't long before typewriters specific to other languages were created. Eventually, typewriters were created for languages that did not even use the Roman alphabet, such as Russian, Arabic, Chinese, and Japanese amongst the earliest. The Asian languages in particular produced intricate typewriters that look radically different to shows due to the demand of the language. As we discussed earlier, the design of the QWERTY keyboard was meant to slow down the typist to prevent keys jamming. This is no longer a problem with computer keyboards we use today that do not use an arm to produce the character. This means that the leg introduced by QWERTY to slow down typists actually makes it a less efficient keyboard for no reason. Today, many other keyboard arrangements have been created, which shortens the distance the hand has to travel by placing frequently used characters closer together, such as the Dvorak, the Comac, and the Meltron. So why is the QWERTY still the most popular? The answer seems simply to be that people are used to the QWERTY, and the effort that it takes to replace it doesn't compensate for the increase in speed that these other keyboards supposedly create. In fact, with touch typing, there has not been any other keyboard that have significantly outstripped the QWERTY keyboard in terms of typing speed and accuracy. The creation of the typewriter was originally meant for the blind. After all, why would a sighted need such a machine when they had a pen? But the benefits of using a typewriter 
such as its speed and clarity, were soon realized, and the creation of the typewriter was aimed at a general population. However, the first Scholes and Glidden typewriter was not offered for sale until 1873, seven years after its creation, and sales did not take off immediately. It wasn't until later, with additional improvements made by Remington, that its popularity took off. But what was an arms manufacturer like Remington doing marketing a typewriter? Well, in the 1870s, the American Civil War had come to an end, and the sale of rifles decreased. Remington was looking for a new product to sell. The gamble paid off, and with some tweaking, Remington quickly made a lot of money off the typewriter. The introduction of the typewriter into the workplace contributed to 20th century feminism by giving women work outside of the home. Social traditionalists warned that this would spell the end of the American family as they knew it. In a way, they were not wrong. Typewriters strengthened the trend toward dual-income families. By 1910, the Census Bureau in the United States found that 81% of professional typists were female. The design of the QWERTY keyboard meant that more characters were allocated to the left hand, 15 keys, versus the right hand, which only handles 11 keys. Some researchers believe that this asymmetrical layout of the characters has impacted the connotation we associate with words. They call this the QWERTY effect, which claims that words spelled with more letters on the right side of the keyboard generated more positive feelings than those with more letters on the left side. This was believed to be because keys on the right side were easier to type, regardless of whether the typist was right or left-handed. They found that right side words, especially those created after the QWERTY keyboard, have more positive feelings than left side words. Champions of the QWERTY effect argue that widespread typing has introduced a semantic change in how new words in a language arises, as we what we say through our fingertips. They claim that people who type subconsciously bring to mind the keyboard position of letters when they read words, so that even when they're not typing, the QWERTY layout influences how they feel about a word. Researchers Jasmine and Casasanto even urge branding and marketing people to consider naming new products, brands, and companies with the right name. Furthering Jasmine and Casasanto's experiments, Garcia and Schoenheimer tested the QWERTY effect on product, movie, and online video ratings through Amazon, IMDb, and YouTube, as well as other review sites. They found that reviews that had more right side words generally had better star ratings or thumbs up, while the opposite was true for reviews with more left side words used. Even with new technologies such as touchscreen stylus, swipe keyboards, and voice dictation, QWERTY keyboard has maintained its awesome, if surprising, staying power. Now with the convenience of laptop, typing on QWERTY keyboards is becoming increasingly prominent in the classroom, where students are using it to take notes. Typing notes is faster than handwriting for many students, allowing them to type more and have notes that are easy to edit, share, and store. Some argue that typing notes allow students more time to pay attention to lecture, and interact with the instructor. However, critics of typing argue that it results in shallower processing, less encoding, and therefore impairs learning. Multiple studies have shown that knowledge retention is greater with handwritten notes, and many brain imaging reveal that writing increases activity in a large territory of left frontal and parietal areas that are known to be important for focusing attention or keeping several pieces of information in mind at the same time and for complex linguistic processing. In fact, typing is becoming increasingly prominent not only in the classroom, but in our everyday lives. A recent survey of 2,000 British people found that one-third of respondents hadn't written anything by hand in the previous six months, while on average, respondents hadn't put pen to paper in 41 days. And this quote, novelist Mohsin Hamid eloquently describes our relationship with technology such as the QWERTY keyboard and its related parts. When I spend a lot of my day inputting characters into a computer, I feel strongly after many hours of this that the technology is shaping and configuring me. I'm a different person in how I express myself and think. The future is opening up where there's a human-machine fusion going on. Of course, we invented those machines but they're shaping us now.
the greedy people has become entrenched in our lives and deeply entangled in the technologies that we use to create tax. Despite its inefficiencies, it appears that the QWERTY keyboard is here to stay for a while longer. Thank you.